In this video, I want to explain some reasons why I believe William Ruto might get away with all the Kenya Kwanzaa's incompetence and I won't be shocked to find William Ruto winning 2027 presidential election. The first reason, Gen Z's are no longer leaderless, tribeless, and fearless. And I'm saying that because I'm seeing a leader is emerging in the name of Morara Kibaso. So do your own comparison. Before the emergence of Morara, and now that he has emerged, was Gen Z more powerful before Morara emerged, or is Gen Z now more powerful with the emergence of Morara? Before Morara emerged, we saw Gen Z's mobilizing themselves, and they did something that very few Kenyans expected. They stormed an occupied parliament. What have they now done with the emergence of Morara? Do your own comparison, ladies and gentlemen. The second reason, the big tribes are still tribal. They are just pretending. And we also know that change is gradual. Change never comes instantly, but it comes gradually. If Kenyans in 2022 voted along ethnic lines, I don't think by 2027, they will now be clever or wiser not to vote along ethnic lines. The Kalenji nation will most obviously vote for William Ruto. The Luo nation, a section of the Luo nation, and the coast region will most definitely follow Raila Odinga. A huge section of the Kamba nation will still go with Kalonzo Musioka. The mountain might also follow their leaders. So the big tribes are still tribal. And that's why William Ruto might get away with it. The big tribes can easily form an alliance that will defeat the Gen Z movement. Another reason, Kenyans are not appreciative and they are very, very forgetful. Hmm. Kenyans will be singing your praises today. Tomorrow they will be insulting you. Before Morara emerged, we saw Kasumuel very active during the Gen Z protests. I've tried looking for Morara during the protests. I've not seen Morara. Hmm. But now Kenyans are singing his praises. Maybe after some few months, they will have forgotten about Morara. Kenyans are not appreciative and they are always very, very forgetful. Another reason, the movement has been hijacked by some sectarian political interests. Look at those pretending to be Gen Z's. Most of them are those against William Ruto's rule. And currently those against William Ruto's rule are regarding the Shago supporters and some Kalonzo Musioka supporters. They are pretending to be supporting Gen Z's. But at the right time, they will retreat to their ethnic cocoons when their favorite leaders will offer their candidatures. So they will dump Gen Z's to support their favorite leaders. Whether those leaders will be Kalonzo regarding, they will dump Gen Z's. So they are just pretending now to be supporting Gen Z's. But at the right time, they will dump Gen Z's to support their favorite leaders. William Ruto might also get away with it because of the infightings among top 
influencers who contributed immensely to the YNZ protests. We had figures such as Bonface Mwangi, Hanifa. There were just several influencers online, all contributing towards a cause. If you look at them now online, they are fighting one another. Hanifa is fighting somebody else. Bonface Mwangi is fighting Kasmel. So there is that in fighting that will also augur negatively for the Gen Z movement. And that can make William Ruto get away with all the incompetence in Kenya Kwanzaa government. I'm also seeing the bedrock of Gen Z has also been disturbed. Its bedrock has been shaken. This is something I keep on saying in this forum that a majority of Gen Z's were Azimio-leaning Kenyans. They made the bulk of the Gen Z's. And I'm saying that because it has, the anger has been building. There are those who naturally knew William Ruto was not going to perform. And they, they played a major role during the Gen Z protests. They were only joined by a few individuals who were not happy on how William Ruto was treating regarding the Shagwam, and a few individuals who were not happy on how William Ruto was ruling. But a hoping majority never voted for William Ruto. They never believed in him. But that bedrock has been disturbed. That bedrock was coming from Nyanza, Western Coast, Nairobi. It has been disturbed. If you look at the kind of appointments William Ruto has made, he has disturbed those bedrocks. And that's also something that will overbear negatively for the Gen Z's. And that's why Gen Z's have been calling for some protests, but the protests are not bearing any fruits. I believe that's also a reason why William Ruton will get away with his incompetence. Another reason, Kenyans have got a very high affinity for electing cooks, rapists, murderers, such like people. I don't think Kenyans have changed much. The dirtier you are, the more appealing you are to some Kenyans. If you look at what Gen Z is trying to propel, they are trying to push for good governance, leaders of integrity. That's something that might not work with the majority of Kenyans because Kenyans are worshipping crooks and it might not change come the next election. As much as Gen Z are trying to open Kenyan's eyes, it might not change much. Kenyans might still go for the same, same crooks in the next election. Murderers. People we've seen shooting Kenyans in broad daylight. Those are the people Kenyans love electing. So Gen Z's might not have their way because of that. I don't know what you think. Let me hear from you on the comment section. But looking at things objectively, William Ruto might get away with the incompetence of Kenya Kwanzaa government. And Kenyans will have themselves to blame because they never learn. People who are talking of shareholding government just last year, some Kenyans have forgotten. They are now heaping presses on such individuals. Mm -hmm. Kenyans will never learn, ladies and gentlemen. Let me stop it there. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give the video a like. Let's meet in our next analysis. Thank you. God bless you.
God bless Kenya.